Hi class, this is Dr. O'Connor. This is the third video for Chapter 2. And in this video, we're going to talk about how electrons are distributed around the nucleus of the atom. So, you know, some questions you might have. Well, are they just distributed randomly? Do they just move about randomly about the nucleus? Why is the periodic table set up the way it is. For example, why are there a different number of elements in the periods? Remember period two, there are eight elements. And then when we get down to period four, there are more elements. So we're going to answer these questions here. So it turns out that each electron is restricted to moving within certain regions of space and how is this determined? It's determined by the amount of energy the electron has and the number of electrons that have these different amounts of energy. And that's determined by the number of electrons that are present in the atom. So the properties of the elements, as we know from before, are determined by the arrangement of the electrons in their atoms. Electronic structure or electron configurations are based on quantum mechanics. And this was thanks to Erwin Schrodinger back in 1926. Electrons have both particle-like and wave-like properties. We can describe the behavior of an electron using a wave function. Electrons are restricted to certain regions of space within the atom. And again, this depends on the energy level of the electron. We say that the energies of electrons are quantized. They're restricted to having certain values. So I'm going to draw this, these steps. So let's say energy is increasing. So the electron, it can have this energy this energy or this energy, but nothing in between. Electrons are grouped around the nucleus into energy levels that we call shells. So a shell is a grouping of electrons in an atom according to energy. It's an energy level. And we represent these shells with N and a shell can have n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, and so on. So an electron can be in n equal 1, energy level 2, energy level 3, and so on. Within the shells, electrons are further grouped into subshells. And we identify these in order of increasing energy. And these subshells are S, P, D, and F subshells. So in shell number one, there is one subshell, and that is an S subshell. In shell number two, we have two subshells, both an S and a P. In shell number three, we have three subshells. Notice how the shell number corresponds to the number of subshells. So in shell number three, we have S, P, and D subshells. In shell number four, we have four subshells, S, P, D, F. If we were to go to shell number five, we would have five subshells, shell six, six subshells, and so on. Again, as I said, the number of subshells is equal to the shell number. Now, so we know that within a shell, electrons are further grouped into subshells. And within each subshell, electrons are grouped into what we call orbitals. Orbitals are regions of space within the atom where an electron in a given subshell is most likely to be found. Only two electrons can occupy an orbital. So let's take a look at the electron distribution in atoms, okay? So here we start off with our shell, n equal to 1. 
we know that there is one subshell and there is one orbital. That's an S orbital. So the maximum number of electrons in an S orbital is two. So the total electron capacity, capacity for shell number one is two electrons. So now let's go to n equal to two. So in shell number two, there are two subshells. We have an S subshell, which contains one S orbital and can contain a maximum of two electrons. Now, the P subshell is made up of three P orbitals. So if a maximum number of two electrons is allowed in an orbital, if we have three orbitals, that means the P subshell can hold six electrons, two in each of the three orbitals. So shell number two can hold a maximum of eight electrons, two in an S subshell and six in a P subshell. Let's go to shell number three. Again, there are three subshells. There's one S orbital, there are three P orbitals, and five D orbitals. So we know that the maximum number of electrons in an S orbital is two. In the three P orbitals, that's six. And obviously, if the D subshell has five orbitals, then the maximum number of electrons in a D subshell would be 10. That gives a total of 18 electrons maximum in n equals 3. Then we go to n equal to 4, four subshells, S, P, D, and F. And the F subshell has seven orbitals for a total of 14 electrons. So an F subshell is made up of seven orbitals. And if there's a maximum of two electrons in each orbital, then the F subshell can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. So because N equal to four, it has an S, a P, a D, and an F subshell, it can hold a maximum of 32 electrons. So let's do a little problem here. You have to know this. All right, you will have to know this table. How many electrons are present in an atom that has its first and second shell filled and has three electrons in its third shell? Well, if the first shell is filled, that is two electrons. If the second shell is filled, that's eight electrons, plus three in the third shell. So that's 13 electrons. And remember, we're talking about a neutral atom here. So all we need to do is look up atomic number 13, because if the neutral atom has 13 electrons, there are 13 protons. That gives us Z. And if we look on the periodic table, this element corresponds to aluminum. I told you that an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons and the electrons must be of opposite spin. Remember, electrons are going to repel one another. So an S subshell, we know, consists of one orbital, a P subshell, three orbitals, a D subshell, five orbitals, and an F subshell, seven orbitals. So let's take a look at what these orbitals look like. Remember, these are mathematical functions. These are wave functions from quantum mechanics. So let's take a look at S orbitals. They happen to be spherical in shape. So that means that the probability of finding an electron is in this spherical region here. And actually, it's most probable that we'll find the electron closest to the nucleus. So S orbitals are spherical in shape. The three P orbitals have two lobes. And there are three of them. And they're oriented at right angles to one another. So um, let me call this the x-axis here. And let's call this the z. And this will be the y. 
So notice in this case, the two orbitals, or the two lobes, are aligned along the x-axis. Here are the z-axis, and here are the y-axis. So again, they're oriented at right angles to one another. The electrons are most likely to be found in these lobes. So again, the three P orbitals are dumbbell-shaped sh and oriented at right angles to one another. Here are the five D orbitals, and they, as you can see, are much more complex than the P orbitals, okay? Um, we have four of them. We have four lobes, so the probability of finding the electron or electrons is within these lobes. So these are, again, these are regions in space that are determined by these wave functions or these mathematical expressions, okay? Then we have this one here. We notice this donut shape around the center, two lobes, okay? And then here, this gives you an idea of what this might look like for all of the 5D orbitals. So now we'll talk more about the S and the P orbitals a little bit later because it turns out that in some types of bond formation, the bond formation is due to the overlap of these orbitals. But we'll talk about that later. So here I'm asking you, what is the maximum number of electrons that can occupy a 3P subshell? That would be 6. A 2S subshell. The 2 here it corresponds to the shell number. Here, again, the three to the shell number. So the number before the letter designation corresponds to the shell number. So in this case here, n is equal to three, n is equal to two. So in a 2s subshell, the maximum number of electrons would be two. Here we have a 5p orbital, so n equals five, but Notice, it's a p orbital. We can only have two electrons in an orbital. In shell number three, there would be a maximum of 18 electrons. And in a 3D subshell, so that would be a maximum of 10 electrons because there are five D orbitals. So electron configurations. An electron configuration is the specific arrangement of electrons in the atom shells and subshells. And there are three rules. We're going to learn how to write electron configurations. Remember, we said that electrons are distributed depending on the energy of the electron. So electrons will occupy the lowest energy orbitals available beginning with a 1s. Each orbital can hold only two electrons, and those electrons must be of opposite spin. Orbitals in a subshell are each half filled by one electron before any one orbital is completely filled by the addition of a second electron. So for example, let's say we have our three p orbitals here. Um, so this, these would represent the three p orbitals and let's say I have to distribute four electrons in these three p orbitals. I would first, we have one, two, three. So I, they would be half filled first. And then I would put the other electron in here. And the, these arrows show that the electrons have opposite spin. I could not fill the orbitals, the p orbitals like this. That would be wrong. They, uh, in a subshell, the orbitals have to be half filled before we pair the electrons. This is how we write electron configurations. This is table 2.3 from your book, and this shows the electron configuration for the first 20 elements. You need to know these, but I'm going to show you how to do them in a minute. So as far as filling order goes, we'll fill the first shell first. So the 1s, the 1s subshell fills first. So shell number one that has a maximum of two electrons 
that would fill first. The second one, the next one would be the 2S and then the 2P, the 3S and the 3P. Now, after the 3P, there's an energy uh, crossover here between the 4S and the 3D. After the 3P, the 4S fills before the 3D. We have the 4P, and then the 5S fills before the 4D, and then the 5P. So right here is the filling order all the way up to 7S. So you need to know that. But again, I'm going to show you how to do this in a moment because there's an easy way to write electron configurations. So how do we write electron configurations? We can represent them in two ways. One is using the SPDF notation. And what we do is we use a number to designate the shell, SP, D, or F to represent the subshell, and then the superscript here to re represent the number of electrons, in this case, in the S subshell. Okay. So in this case here, we know that the electrons, these two electrons, are in the first shell and in an S subshell or an S orbital, if you will. Another way to write electron configurations is using an orbital box diagram. And you can use boxes. I happen to use these lines, okay? And the arrows represent the electrons. So for nitrogen, okay, if you look at your periodic table, the atomic number of nitrogen is seven. So we distribute those electrons of nitrogen. So there are seven electrons. We know that the 1s fills first, so we show them of opposite spin, then the 2s, and then we have one, two, three electrons in the 2p. So this is an orbital box diagram for nitrogen. Let me write the electron configuration. We have one s, so two electrons in the 1s, two electrons in the 2s, and then we have 2p, we have three electrons in the p subshell. So this is how we write the electron configuration for nitrogen. Let's do some others. Let's go ahead and write some electron configurations and draw some orbital box diagrams. Let's do hydrogen first. Hydrogen has one electron, so an orbital box diagram would look like this, and the electron configuration would look like this. That's hydrogen. Let's do lithium. It has three electrons. So the orbital box diagram would look like this. We'd have two in the 1s and one in the 2s. So the electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s1, okay? Let's do one, might be a little more interesting here. Let's do fluorine. Fluorine has nine electrons. So here we have a 1s, a 2s, one, two, three. That's our 2p subshell. So we have two electrons in the 1s, two in the 2s, and then we have one, two, three, four, five in the p. So the electron configuration for fluorine would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p, Okay. Let's do another one. Oh, let's do silicon. Okay. So silicon has 14 electrons. So we need 1s, 2s, 2p. We're going to need the 3s and 3p. Again, you just follow the filling order. So two electrons go in the 1s, two in the 2s, one, two, three, four, five, six in the p, two in the 3s, and then we have one 
2 and the 3p. So the electron configuration for silicon would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. Now, notice that this configuration here will corresponds to the configuration for neon. So I can use the noble gas shorthand configuration. What you do is, for an element, you look at the noble gas that comes before that element, in this case it's neon. So for this, I can put in brackets the symbol for neon and then just write the rest of the configuration. That is the shorthand configuration. You find the noble gas that comes before the element and you're able to write the shorthand notation. That really become, comes in handy when you get to these elements with higher atomic number, okay? Because you can imagine it could get quite cumbersome writing these out. Also, these electrons here that correspond to neon, those are called the core electrons. And then these electrons here in that third shell, those are the outermost electrons. Those are called the valence electrons. And those are the ones that participate in bonding. We'll talk about that later. Okay, let's do another one. This time we'll do one that's further down on the periodic table. What do you say we do? Let's do bromine. So bromine has 35 electrons. So we're doing bromine, 35 electrons. So I need a 1s, a 2s, 2p, a 3s, a 3p, okay. And after the 3p, we have the 4s, and let me mark these as we go. 1s, 2s, 2p. Again, we're just following the uh, filling up order. 3s. Here are the 3p's. And this is the 4s. And remember, after the 4s come the 5d orbitals. So these are the 3d. And then finally, we'll write the three, four P orbitals. So let's start filling up these orbitals. So we have two in the one S, two in the two S, six in the two P, two in the three S, six in the three P, two in the four S, and let's see, how many is that so far? We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So we're going to have 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then 5 in the 4P. 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. So let's write the electron configuration. We have 1S2, 2S2. 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. Remember, we have the five um, 3d orbitals. And then 4p5. Okay? And you can also write this this way, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Um, you could put the 3d10 here, 4s2, 4p5. So either way is fine. I prefer to write it this way because this shows the filling order. But notice here that if I go look at bromine, the noble gas that comes before bromine on the periodic table is argon. So I can write this then. So that would be everything up to here. That would be due to argon. And then I would have 4s2, 3d10, 
4p5. That would be the shorthand notation. Okay, And if we look at bromine, how many valence electrons does it have? Well, those are the outermost electrons. The electrons in the outermost shell, the outermost shell is 4, so there are 7 valence electrons for bromine. Okay, Let's do one more, and then I'll let you work on these on your own. So let me erase this at the top. I don't want to erase the uh, periodic table here because it will erase. All right, let's do another one. And let's do this iron, okay? So it has 26 electrons. So we have 1s, 2s, the 2p, 3s, or 3s, 3p. We have 4s, and we're going to need to use the d orbitals and 3d. So let's go ahead and fill these with the electrons. That's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Remember, they've all got to be half filled before I can start pairing. 25 and 26. Okay. And the electron configuration then is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. In shorthand notation, here we have iron. The noble gas that comes before it is argon, so all of this corresponds to argon. And then 4s2, 3d10. As far as valence electrons for the transition elements, some texts will say, oh, just use the um, outermost shell, so the 2 here. But really, it should be both the s and the d because the d electrons are also used in bonding. So this would have 10, 12 valence electrons. So 12 valence electrons. Those are, uh, that's for the transition elements, okay? Now, let me show you something. I'm going to use the periodic table to show you how to write electron configurations. Remember, the periodic table is we, we have the periods here, so this is period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Gee, could it be the periods correspond to the shell numbers? Isn't that funny? Period 1 has two elements. Hmm, could that correspond to n equal to 1? Period 2 has eight elements. Hmm, n equal to 2 maybe. Period 3 here, okay and four and so on. So remember when I had you guys label your blank periodic table, I had you label it with the blocks. So here's how you labeled it. I told you the S blocks was group 1A and 2A, including helium. Groups 3A through 8A, and that's the P block, Hmm, P block, six elements. Groups 1B through 8B, or the transition elements, are the D block. Oh, how interesting, 10 elements, okay, in each one. And then the inner transition elements were the F block, okay? And there are 14 <laughs> elements in each row. Boy, that seems to correspond to S, P, D, and F subshells, and it does. So, for example, Let's say I was doing um, the electron configuration for carbon. It would be right here. Here's how I would do it. I would start at the 1s. So I have 1s1, 1s2. And again, I would number this with the periods. Here I start at 2. I have 2s1, 2s2. Then we go right over here. To, so we're just reading the periodic table from left to right. Oh, 2s2. Here I have 2, 
2p1, 2p2. So I would stop right there. Let's do the one for the iron. So the iron is right here, okay? So let's do it reading the periodic table. You just read from left to right. So I would start, start up here. I have um, a period one. I have 1s1, 1s2. Here I have 2s1, 2s2. Here I have 2p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here I have 3s1, 3s2. Whoops. Uh, it's not good. 3s2. And then I go over, again I'm reading from left to right. I have 3p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 3p6. And then here I start at 4s1, 4s2. Now what you have to keep in mind, when you start with the D's, that starts with a 3, okay? Here the F's start with a 4. So this would be 3, after the 4S2, I have 3D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 3D, 6. So the periodic table is set up in such a way that you can do the electronic configurations by reading from left to right. You've got to know your S, your P, your D, and your F blocks. Let's use this one to do an electron configuration for calcium. So I start here. I have 1s1, 1s2. Oops, you can't see that. Let's do that again. I think you can see it now. 1s1, 1s2. So we're doing calcium. Then I go to the second one. I have 2s1, 2s2. And then I go all the way over here. I have 2p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2p6. And then here I start at 3s1, 3s2. Then I go to 3p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I go to 4s1, 4s2. That's the electron configuration for calcium. You can do these orbital box diagrams and these electron configurations by using the periodic table. So it looks like the periodic table, the elements are set up according to electron configuration. So the electron configurations are read right from the periodic table. So go ahead and practice those. If you have any questions, you can contact me. Here's another figure from your book that will help you with that. So you just read from left to right. 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p6, and so on. So practice those. I do want you to be able to write electron configurations. You already know that the a valence electron is an electron in the outermost or valence shell of an atom. And the valence shell is the outermost electron shell of the atom. We know that calcium for example, we just did calcium, and the outermost shell would be shell number four, and there are two electrons. So calcium has two valence electrons. Notice, and we're just talking about main group elements here, so groups 1a through 8a. Notice calcium is in 2a. It has two valence electrons. Well, guess what? Beryllium, magnesium, strontium, barium, and so on. All the elements in group 2a have two valence electrons. If you don't believe me, write the electron configurations. All the elements in group 1A have one valence electron. We go over here to 3A, guess what? Three valence electrons. 4A, they all have four valence electrons. 5A, they all have five elect valence electrons. 6A, they all have six valence electrons. 7A, seven valence electrons. 8A, eight valence electrons. Okay, so for the main group elements, the group number corresponds to the number of valence electrons. That is not true for the transition or the inner transition elements. But for main group elements, so if I ask you how many valence electrons for phosphorus, it's in group 5a, there are five valence electrons. I have that summarized right here. So it makes sense then, elements in the same group, again we're talking main group, have similar electron configurations in their valence shells. 
So as I said, group A, group 1A all have one valence electron. So we can write that like so, where n is the shell number. So that could be um, 1s1, 2s1, and so on. Group 2A, they all have two valence electrons and so on. So for all main group elements, the group number corresponds to the number of valence electrons. And it turns out we use electron dot symbols to represent valence electrons. This shows you groups 1a, 2a, 7, and 8a. It shows you the valence shell electron configurations. It's the valence shell that we're interested in because it's the valence electrons that take part in bonding. So let me go ahead and show you how to write an electron or Lewis dot symbol. So for example, we have oxygen and oxygen, whoops, as we can see, is in group 6A. So that means oxygen has six valence electrons. And what we do is we write the elemental symbol and then we use dots to show the valence electrons. Oxygen has six, so I go ahead and place four electrons about the oxygen and then once the four are placed around the oxygen then I pair them. So six valence electrons. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. Sodium has one valence electron. Carbon has four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. You don't pair them till after you have four dots around the elemental symbol. Fluorine has, it's in group 7A, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. And neon in group 8A has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. So very easy to write. Again, we can determine the number of valence electrons from the group number for main group elements. Well, I think that's it for chapter two. So work on this, practice writing your electron configurations and orbital box diagrams. And if you have any questions, please contact me. Everyone have a great day and a great holiday weekend.